Alright folks, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to build a modern, stylish, to-do app using only Python. Thanks to a cool framework called Flet. No HTML, no CSS, no JavaScript, just clean, beautiful UIs built with Python. Let's go step by step and I'll explain every single line. I'll make sure you learn something. So watch till the end. I'm inside the VS Code. I use this editor because I keep working on different languages, and I've become used to it. You can use PyCharm for Python-specific projects. Here's my full to-do app code. I'll explain to you step by step. First up, we import the flat library and give it a shortcut name, FT, because let's face it, we're lazy and typing flat every time would be tragic. But before that, you need to install flat. Just type this command in the terminal and flat will be installed. You can check my Python flat video for installing and learning the basics of flat. Now we define the main function. Flat calls this when the app launches and gives us a page object, basically your canvas to draw stuff on. Like the empty house before the furniture arrives. This sets the window title. Not that it affects functionality, but hey, a nameless app is like a nameless baby. Kinda weird. We're setting the theme mode to light here, you can change it to dark if you want hacker vibes. For now, we'll keep it bright and happy like a morning coffee. Here we define the app window's size. Now this line right here, is where the magic starts. This sets the background color of the entire app page. We're using a soft and subtle shade called blue underscore gray underscore 50, which is part of Flet's built-in color palette. It's like giving your app a nice fresh coat of paint, not too bright, not too dark, just right to make everything else pop. So this line is setting up our task list column, basically the place where all our tasks will stack up, one below the other, like pancakes at a coding breakfast. FT column class. This creates a vertical layout, like a container where we can add controls, like our task rows, in a top to bottom fashion. Then, spacing equals 10, puts 10 pixels of space between each task. Then, expand equals true, tells the column to expand and take up all the vertical space available inside its parent. So as more tasks are added, it grows vertically to fill space properly. It's like saying, hey buddy, stretch out as much as you can, don't be shy. And, scroll equals auto, means the column will automatically become scrollable when there are too many tasks to fit on the screen. This line creates our input box, the place where users type in their to-do items. The text field is a part of Flet's UI toolkit. It lets users type things in. Then, label sets the placeholder for that field. Now the fun begins. We define a function that runs whenever the add button is clicked. It takes one argument, e, short for event, which we won't use here, but Flet requires it. Think of it like being invited to a party and you bring your ID just in case, even if no one checks it. This line is where we grab the text the user typed into our task input box, and remove the leading and trailing white spaces. The new underscore task dot value fetches the actual text entered in the text field. Strip. I call it a little string cleaning ninja move. It removes any leading or trailing spaces from the input. If task underscore text. This is a condition. All that we need to do if the user actually typed something, will go inside this if condition. This line creates a text widget to display the task we just grabbed. We pass in task underscore text, the cleaned up string, and set the font size to 16 so it's nice and readable, not micro-sized. Also, set the color of the text to white, and selectable equals false, simply means the text can't be selected or highlighted by the user. You can remove this parameter, since by default selectable is false. This is another magic moment, the toggle underscore done function lets us cross out a task when we click on it, like saying, yep, I did it. Inside this function, we're checking if there's no current style, or no line through decoration already applied. Basically, is this task not crossed out yet? If not crossed out, we apply style to that text using the text style class. Set the decoration to line underscore through, to strike through the text to show it's done, and change the color to a light gray, giving it that faded, I'm complete look. But if it's already crossed out, we undo the strike through and bring the color back to white, like reviving a task from the dead, like having a, whoops, maybe we celebrated too early, moment. 
And finally to apply the changes to the page, we use the page.update method. We tell Flat, yo, redraw the page, something just changed. Now, this is an important part. So pay attention. In Flat, a simple text widget doesn't support gestures like clicks. That means, the toggle underscore done function cannot be called just by clicking the task. First you need to make it clickable. And in order to make it clickable, you need to wrap it with gesture detector class. This class listens for user actions, like tapping or swiping. We pass in task underscore label as the content, so it knows what to watch. And then we say, Hey, if the user taps on this text, run the toggle underscore done function. That's the one that crosses out or uncrosses the task. This little function is like the bye bye button for our task. When the delete icon is clicked, the delete underscore task function gets triggered. It does two things. Tasks.controls.remove, task underscore row. This tells Flet, hey, remove this specific task row from the list of visible tasks. Think of tasks.controls like a list of all our current to-dos. We're just removing one from that list. And page.update. Now we're giving our task a delete button, because what's a to-do app? without the power to banish tasks. Let's break it down. The icon button class this creates a clickable button, but instead of text, it shows an icon. Icons.delete that's the classic trash can icon. Then, setting the color of the icon to red, because red makes it clear, this is dangerous. It's like a button that says, don't press, unless you're sure. And, when the user clicks this trash can, we call the delete underscore task function, we just explained earlier. Alright, now we're wrapping our task in a stylish little box, like putting your to-do item in a mini card. Let's break it down. The container class. Think of this as the outer frame or wrapper. It gives structure and style. Content. Inside the container, we're placing the task text, with gesture detection, and the delete button horizontally side by side using the row class. Alignment equals space between. This pushes the task text to the left and the delete button all the way to the right, perfect spacing without needing to think too much. Blue underscore gray underscore 700 gives a cool dark background to the task item so it stands out from the rest of the page. Border underscore radius equals 10 gives a smooth, rounded corners because sharp edges are so 2005. Padding equals 10 adds breathing room inside the container so things aren't squished like a budget airline seat. And box shadow class. This adds a soft drop shadow, giving your task a 3D lifted look. Overall, this line takes a boring task and turns it into a UI card that looks like it belongs in a premium productivity app. These last three lines are the wrap it up and refresh part of our function. Tasks.controls.append. This adds the newly created task container, with text plus delete button, to our list of tasks. It's like saying, alright buddy, join the gang. New underscore task dot value is set to blank. This clears the input field so the user doesn't have to manually delete what they typed. Smooth user experience. No one likes extra backspacing. And page dot update. This refreshes the screen so the new task shows up immediately. Without this, it's like throwing a party and forgetting to open the door for the guests. This is where we finally assemble everything and display it on the screen like placing furniture in your new apartment. Page.add. This tells Flat, hey, show this stuff on the screen. You're adding a layout structure to the page. The column class. Inside this column, we have two main things. One, a row containing the task input and the add button. Two, the tasks list. So, the row class. It is like a horizontal layout box, anything inside will be arranged side by side. As explained earlier. New underscore task. This is our text field widget where the user types in the task. It was created earlier. The elevated button class creates a button. This button user will click to add their task. The add is the label text that shows on the button. And the on underscore click equals add underscore task connects this button to our custom add underscore task function. So when users click the button, it calls that function to add the new task to the list. Then, spacing equals 20. 
adds vertical space between the input row and the task list. Keeps things from looking cramped. Like social distancing, but for widgets. Alignment equals start. Aligns everything to the top of the page. If this wasn't there, things might float weirdly in the center or bottom. This last line is like the director calling action. It tells Flet to launch the app and call our main function. Are you excited to see the results? Let's run our code. Save this file with .py extension. Now, open the terminal. In the top menu, you'll see terminal and new terminal. Now, go to the folder path where your file is. And type Python space file name. Hit enter. And boom, you've got a working to-do app. So there you have it, a clean, modern, interactive to-do app in Python using FLET. Also, if you enjoyed this and want to see more apps like a login screen, calculator, or even a dashboard, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, keep coding, and don't forget to mark your tasks as done.